Hey everyone, this is Darren with Crazy Minnow Studio, and in this quick tutorial, we're going to go over setting up Salsa with Dissonance Voice Chat. So if you head over to the Salsa landing page, you'll find a link to the Dissonance Voice Chat blog post, and this post will give the latest status of Salsa with Dissonance. And right now we've got a link to the tutorial documentation, and this is basically what we're going to be going over today. We're going to really convert this information uh, from a text tutorial into a video tutorial. So we're going to follow along with it and make sure we hit all of the points that are in the text tutorial. So let's get started. First off, you need to make sure you've got the requirements for Salsa with Dissonance, and that is Salsa version 1.5.0 and higher, and Dissonance voice chat version 1.0.6 and higher. And then of course you're gonna need the Salsa Dissonance link add-on, and you can't really have voice chat without a microphone, so that kind of goes without saying. We're gonna go ahead and download the Boxhead version 2 model. He's been tweaked to uh, provide a little bit better operation with the Unity networking spawning. Speaking of that, this tutorial is going to cover setting up Salsa with Dissonance using the Unity network system. Now let's get these components installed. I've already downloaded them from the Asset Store, uh, so we're going to be running with Salsa 1.5, and let's import this. As we mentioned in the tutorial, we're not going to pull in the not the editor, the examples folder. We don't need that. And then we're going to pull in the dissonance voice chat. And on this one, uh, we don't, we only need one integration here. So let's make sure we've got the right one. Let's uncheck that. We want this Unity Networking high level API integration. That's the only one we want. Okay. And next, we're going to pull in the Salsa dissonance link add-on, and this is one script, and then finally the new box head model. And he is actually going to repopulate this examples folder, so you're going to see this pop back in here. So we've installed all the components we need. Uh, now let's go ahead and set this up. We're going to kind of go through three basic steps, and then there'll be a final step uh, to build the project. First, we're going to create a spawnable prefab for our player character, and then we're going to create and configure the dissonance manager, and then we'll create and configure the Unity Networking Manager. So let's build the player prefab. First off, we're going to drag that new box head model into our scene, and then let's go ahead and save this scene. And let's rename him real quick. Uh, and this is a blender model, so we purposefully rocked him back 90 degrees on the x-axis so that if we zero him out, he's sitting up nice and straight. All right, that covers basically all of this right here. Now we need to add some components to this guy. First is going to be Salsa 3D. Make sure we've got our, our model selected. Go up here to Component, Crazy Minnow Studio, Salsa 3D and we will configure, let's collapse these, we'll configure Salsa. Salsa added an audio source, we're not concerned with that right now. Uh, with this box head model, he's really easy to configure. All we have to do is click this auto link. He's got the built-in uh, recommended shape names. Next thing I'm gonna do is slightly adjust these trigger values. So that's Salsa, Salsa's done. Also remember, if you're you know using this with a Fuse, iClone, whatever model, set it up the normal way you would set it up with your one-click setup or whatnot. Now the next thing to do is add a Salsa Dissonance Link component. We can do that from up here as well. Add-ons, Salsa Dissonance Link. There's nothing to configure in this. Uh, we don't need to see debug settings right now. And now we need to add a dissonance voice player. This one we're going to pull from our project list. And it's going to be in dissonance and integrations, Unity networking. And the one we want is this HL API player, specifically for Unity networking. As soon as we add this, it's going to add a network identity, which is this next bullet. But since uh, the, the player script added it, uh, we don't need to add it, but we do need to configure it. So we need to set it, set it to local player authority. And then if we want to add some optional components, they're listed down here. I would highly recommend adding randomize, especially to this scene. And the same thing here, we need to configure this. Go ahead and click auto link. That's pretty much all we need to do. Minimize that. 
Uh, next thing we're going to add is this dissonance player controller. And this is included in the, the Unity high level API demo. If you just want to search for it. And then if we if we use this, we also need to pass that information over the network. So let's go ahead and add a transform network transform. We don't need to do anything with that either. That is pretty much it. We have added our optional components and uh, we've provided at the end of each of these steps uh, a graphic of all of the components expanded so that you can go and give it a double check and make sure that your components look similar. So the last piece here for this creating this prefab is to drag it back into our projects list. So I am going to keep with the text tutorial here and uh, create my prefabs directory under my box head folder. And we're just going to drag him right into there. And that means we can remove him from our scene. Let's go ahead and save our scene. And we'll, yeah, let's just save our project. Next is to set up a dissonance object. Uh, basically, this is a manager for dissonance. And we're going to go to the same location that we, we've been getting things from dissonance. And that's in the integrations for Unity Networking High Level. And there is a dissonance setup prefab here. Let's go ahead and drag that into the scene. And that prefab includes these two components, dissonance comms and the comms network. We're going to confirm that our channels uh, match up with our Unity networking channels here shortly. But we do need to add, let's see, three more components. One is a network identity component, just like we put on the player prefab, except on this one, we're not going to set it as local player authority. And then uh, we need a voice receipt trigger and a voice broadcast trigger. So if we come over here and we just type in voice, then we see we've got the receipt trigger and the broadcast trigger. So let me add the receipt trigger and then the broadcast trigger. All right, there's not really anything we need to do with the receipt trigger. So let me just minimize that. And uh, we do want to go ahead and set this to push to talk. This will just make testing a little bit easier in the end. And we need to provide an access name. So we'll make that PTT. But we need to make sure that we do have whatever we put there in our input access settings. I think I'm going to, in the, yep, in the text, I just use the jump. So I'm going to, I'm going to convert that over to PTT just by changing the name because it uses a space bar. That's pretty easy. And let's go ahead and make sure our project settings, let's look at the player here, project player settings. Let's make sure we're not set to run in background. This will just make it easier because we're going to be running both of these on the same machine. We can switch back and forth and not affect the other instance. So make sure that's not checked. Okay, and just like with step one, we had a graphic that showed all of the components. And now we're on to the next piece, setting up Unity Networking. So for this one, we need to add a, an empty to the scene. And that's just for organizational purposes. This really could be put anywhere. We'll call this network manager. And we need to add a network manager. Network manager. Whoops, I added the HUD. That's okay. We want to add the HUD anyway, but that's optional. Uh, but it does make it a little bit easier to uh, control the scene. So let's add manager now. All right. Now there are a couple of things we need to configure here. So just in case I went too fast there, uh, you need to add a network manager to this object and also uh, just, just for ease of use, this network manager HUD. This is not required for this to work. All right, so to configure the network manager, we need to drag, uh, we need to let the network manager, uh, what, do I, what do I have? Oh, I see what happened. Okay, so when I added the network manager HUD, it automatically added a network manager object. So let's go ahead and remove this one. All right, so we've got our HUD and we've got our network manager object or component. Okay, so for this, we need to configure a couple of things. We need to tell it what prefab we want to spawn in for our player character. And we're going to use that box head prefab we created earlier. Let's add that in there. And then we also need to give it a registered spawnable prefab. And this is for dissonance. So it can track the audio. So if you, if you click on the picker here, that's the easiest way to grab this thing. So we want this... Uh, high level API player tracker. That's what we want to put in there. 
let's double check. Click on this advanced configuration. Let's uh, let's double check that we've got the right settings here for our channel. So channel zero is reliable. Channel one is unreliable. Let's go back to dissonance here and make sure that that is set appropriately. Network comms. Uh, reliable is zero and unreliable is one. That is, I believe, all we need in here. And again, we've got a graphic showing our final setup. And now it's basically build and test. So let's go ahead and save our scene and save our project. And we are pretty much ready to build and test. Let's go to our build settings. Uh, we can go ahead and add this scene and let us build and run. I've already got an empty build directory I added as setup. So let's put it in there and we'll call it tutorial. Common name for everything here today. Okay, that's finally built. And uh, let's go ahead and leave the screen resolution. We'll make sure it's windowed. We can go ahead and host from this one. It looks like we've got our camera set facing the back. So let's turn him around. Because when we connect with our client, he's going to spawn in the same spot this instance and we'll go ahead and play and then we're going to connect as the localhost client here so let's go ahead and move him up all right so what we need to do is press space and when and we, when press, we space, press space we see, we see the lip sync going, going on here on for, here our, for our, our remote client client let me pull, let me over, pull over into, into this, one this one here here all right so, all right, so as I'm speaking, As I'm speaking you'll, see you'll see the audio, the audio coming, coming from, this, from client this client to this client, to this and, client we and we get really good really lip sync going, 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 going on here. So anyway, that's how you set up Dissonance and Salsa for lip synced voice chat. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, we'd love to hear your feedback, and we look forward to seeing what you create. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you later.